Okay, so I haven't been in my studio. Happy release day from Andy Moore right now. I'm excited. Her album's out. Um, anyway, I'm going into my studio. I'm nervous because I haven't been in there for a bit because I was in New York with Mandy doing promo. And I'm a little bit nervous about putting up a reel. I'm nervous about what I'm going to find, what I'm going to hear. Mm. Listen to this. RF. Radio frequency. That's Echo Park. All right, I'm nervous what I'm gonna find, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get it going. I'll be back. I am pleasantly surprised at what I found. All right, so I have this new song. Um, it's called Torp, T O R P, and um, uh, so I I tracked it live with. Brendan on drums and uh, Lee was playing this thing, this Lambda Korg 105. If you don't know what that is, it's fucking awesome. Hard to keep in tune. And I was playing guitar. There's all my shit. And it goes into the wall and the amps downstairs. It was all live. And I was singing into this, right? And it's a long song. I don't know how long it is. Maybe seven minutes. Um, and it's a jam. It's like very like, a, it's not a jam. It's a meditation. Um... You'll hear it eventually, but anyway, and at the very end, I was improvising something, uh, which I like to do. I like to keep things open, you know, arrangement wise, and I was improvising something and then, yeah, so the band didn't quite follow me, but I, I remember now I gave really shitty directions. <laughs> I was like D or something and it was actually B, I don't know, but so I had to edit the tape. So why I just rewound it, I'm not sure, but I'm going to fast forward to the edit. So I'm going to show you something as I try and repair this snafu. Stand by. Okay, so here's the edit I'm going to show you. Again, I edited it. I edited it, 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 the tail end of the song because I gave this real head fakey misdirection. So this is the repro head. Uh, it's playback head. That's the record head, right? So I'm going to put it on repro. Boom. So we're listening to the good head. And I did make the cut to that head, not to this head. And I have fucked that up. Like I've marked the edit here and I've cut. Uh, it sucks. And it makes a huge difference. Anyway, I didn't do that in this instance. But I was playing guitar and singing and, you know, trying to be like, make sure it didn't feel like work for everybody. And so I, I was preoccupied and I was slight cutting tape and shit. So. It's not the the best, the most perfect cut, but I don't care. I, I like the way these artifacts sound. Uh, I'm going to play it. Okay. So Okay, so you know when you're when you're editing tape, you actually uh do you see that? That little slash right there, that's me touching the touching this uh white china marker to the tape to mark when the beat is, right? So you'll see it go by. I've already done this edit. I'm just going to show you my problem. One, two, three. Two, three. You see that go by like that? Timing felt weird. But it's not. The edit's good. You know, if you nod your head to it, it's good. Guitar gets a little bit like... If I just solo Brendan. And you see how he ramps up a little bit like that? He speeds up. That's good. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to play this. You can hear it. Just drums. And you can hear me singing in the room. You know, it's like bleed on all the drums. Who cares? Isn't that cool? It's like, I love it. And then my guitar sounds fine. This, but I was like, why does this sound bad? And I realized the bass, which I recorded after I made the edit. So it should have been awesome. Probably because it's on the outer track. So it's at the edge of the tape. It's just not, it doesn't like the tape. The bass doesn't like the edit. Check it out. makes everything go <clears throat> anyway how am i going to fix that well i could i could try bouncing it 
that's not gonna that's not gonna fix it. It went down to tape like that. It it just doesn't want to be on track one. I'm gonna re-record the bass. That's what I gotta do. Or I could bounce it to seven, then punch in the end. I'll probably do that because it's a long song. I, I was wrong. It's not seven minutes. It's it's only six minutes. But like it's that's a long time to like the pocket feels really good. I don't want to. I don't want a record. So the question is like, will you lose any fidelity bouncing? Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. Cause I'm going for gluey, tapey home studio sound anyway. That's my thing. All right. So I'm going to try it. Okay. Here's a little update before I go pick up my kids. Uh, redoing the bass was not an option. It sounded like shit. Didn't have the pocket that that other one had. And I found myself chasing little nuances and it's just like a waste of time. So what did I do? What fixed it? The Moog. The Moog helped. The Moog helped. So doubled the bass with Moog, which I do anyway. I was going to do anyway, but that worked. Muting the Lambda. Unfortunately, the Lambda is another casualty of that edit. Uh, and it was slightly out of tune anyway. So that's a win-win. Gives me two tracks now for background vocals, uh, which I want to do. They'll say, get my friends and we'll sing live in the room. Uh, and what actually saved it was putting the lead vocal on it. So yeah, putting the lead vocal on it and I sang over it and I sang like a high note and it sort of like, it distracts you from the bump. It just does. And it, so anyway, that's it. That's my, that's my day in the studio, and I've got this song in a good place. I won't listen to the vocal now. I can't edit it. I can't do anything because it's on tape. So it is what it is, and I'm going to come back and listen to it um, probably tomorrow morning, and then I'll maybe even sing it again.